So um, today I'm going to talk a bit about our work on trying to um, essentially find ways to evaluate optical music recognition systems for um, full pipeline uh, reconstruction of music. So uh, this is going to be the structure of my talk. Um, this comes from a paper that published in the International Journal of Document Analysis and Recognition. And um, I will first motivate why, talk a little bit the design, about the design of, of our evaluation process. And I will present a quick proof of concept followed by some conclusions. So to begin with, I think this is uh, fairly redundant in, in words, but just to be, uh, put things in context, we know that we use op optical music recognition to convert images of uh, music scores in various formats into a computer processable format, which can then be used for analysis, for typesetting, or for archival applications of music. Now, in, within this pipeline, we identified two uh, to bigger, uh, Paul, um, Just a short question here. Have you switched slides already? Ah, uh, yes. Oh. I think, okay. Because we still see the first slide. Uh, yeah, no. I, I thought you were using the... Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, using now Control we can L. see the... Okay. Uh, this is, so um, in any case, um, this is the, the, the section of MR. It's a field. And we identified two requirements. The first one is that we need a standardized auto Output, basically because um, most RMR systems assume different collections of symbols and uh, semantic outputs. And second, we need some evaluation metrics to evaluate how well uh, we are doing on, on, on OMR, let's say. And both of these issues are unfortunately heavily intertwined because you cannot define uh, an evaluation set on any kind of notation. So in order to try and find a solution to this, uh, we decided to investigate a little bit on music representations. But just to contextualize, it's important to note that um, there's various levels of reconstruction of music. Now we will focus mostly on our structured encodings because from here we can go back to, to, to the rest. And this is more or less what is public right now as far as I, uh, as I could collect. But the main point is that neither of them is perfect for OMR purposes. Some have uh, pros and cons. And um, outside of OMR, what is most in, in vogue right now is music XML and MEI, if we want fully structured reconstructions of music. But um, again, not many of them are being used currently for MR, unless it is for like a final representation once everything is done. But even then, in academic settings, uh, most of the times we don't really get here. And it can be used directly for end-to-end -end systems, but then we have to make some strong simplifying assumptions or to um, do uh, tricks like, uh, um, well, uh, this paper from Yirka uh, that uh, encodes everything with the same engraver and guarantees some stability. Similarly, with uh, when it comes to data sets, what happens is that most of them are uh, incompatible. In here, I've taken into account only those that are public for common Western music notation. And again, most of them, different formats of encoding, different uh, output uh, exp classes, and so on. So overall, quite complicated. So what should we do? What we have found is that since there is no simple way of, OK, let's grab something that is done. Let's try to apply it here. Um, we have decided to try and build something from scratch. Um, uh, but we wanted to have some of these ideas in mind. And of course, this comes with the inevitable question of, OK, we're probably adding some more noise into the, into the discussion. Uh, so here's what we have tried to do. And hopefully, we, we, we've done a little bit. Why we went in this direction is basically because we need to have fair evaluation regardless of the original format. We need also to canonicalize uh, the scores, of course. Um, this can be done uh, like the, the strategies with Deacon or Music XML from, from Yurka's paper I mentioned before. We have to be faithful and exhaustive. We cannot allow any margin for uh, multiple interpretations. And uh, we think, and this might be a little bit of a controversial point, but we believe that semantics and presentation should be separate because OMR does not care so much about the underlying interpretation of the music, but we want to be able to reconstruct the music perfectly. And the point is that sometimes some of uh, the um, playback information of music scores are much more complicated to infer than, than at first. So 
But anyway, I will elaborate on this further because you know, we have limited time. And finally, we also want to communicate with the rest of the OMR ecosystem. So we want to target um, common resources by default. We created MDN with these ideas, basically. So the way we design this is basically we use music XML as a base. Um, we have our specification for a custom format and we do this custom format if it's not already in it with a conversion library and we perform evaluation here. And the idea is that in the future, we would like to support uh, converting back to music XML or any other format as desired from this conversion library. And the idea is that all of these, uh, we use as much uh, stuff from existing sources as possible. And then we can evaluate the quality of the output of the recognition system without having to um, think about um, details of, okay, I'm, I have my system works with MEI, now I have to convert everything and so on and to these further mistakes. Or at least I know uh, the extent of which mistakes are introduced by each company. And finally, the goal would be to also be able to output this from archival applications. The idea of the format is simple. is basically we convert all the scores into a decomposition of primitives and we combine them following an abstract syntax tree of sorts. And this abstract syntax tree is very simple. We only incorporate information of time and position of those nodes that need, uh, nodes, uh, that need it. And we uh, have some uh, strong um, ordering. So we basically canonicalize the ordering of every step of the tree so that we can guarantee that every score can only be represented one way. So again, uh, we only incorporate time and placement information. And the idea is that measures are self-contained because then we can uh, compose uh, smaller units of notation into more complex things. That's one of the main ideas. And we package it through XML, but the truth is that um, we made an arbitrary decision. It can be conceptually be packed in anything else. And on top of this, we define some metrics. Uh, we define a few tiers. The first tier is, okay, if you're doing music detection, uh, object detection, sorry, just lock that as, as the metric and you, every single methodology agrees on their own uh, metrics. The first point then is primitive detection. How many objects are you missing and from, 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 from the overall without taking too much into account exactly the matching, just knowing like, okay, in this score, I should have this many of this symbol and this many of these other symbol. Then the tier two is a structure reconstruction, which is a three, error, a three error rate. And finally, we have some semantic construction uh, that says, okay, for each node, are we placing it in the correct place uh, of the staff? Are we moving it time-wise or position-wise? And how many nodes are we missing of the overall score? For the proof of concept, what we did is we built a data set uh, from some of the corpuses of uh, MuseScore. Uh, and we made a, a measure level and page level data set on it. First, well, there's a whole pipeline to build this, but just believe me when I tell you that um, we uh, we crafted these and we, we, we have some guarantees in, in, in this format. And then the point is that we tried object detection first, but a little bit one of the issues is that object detection methods for certain smaller symbols are complicated and we didn't want to devote too much time into building a full architecture. So we decided to pick up um, an existing system, which was all the varies, for which uh, out of the 50,000 uh, measures that were on the test set, we predicted 45, and we could match 40%. So we had a coverage rate of 76%. And then this is the first tier results. What we found is that more or less most typical symbols are reliably found on the scores, but of course, some of them um, suffer a lot uh, from, from uh, depending on, 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 on how, how often they appear on the score, uh, we have less, less recall. And these are the final metrics that we obtain for, for, for this run. But most of uh, the, the most important point is that we have quite a high trigger rate, so there's margin, margin for improvement. But overall, this is mostly a, a proof of concept that allowed us to say, okay, uh, most of the times, whenever we predict nodes, we're placing them roughly time ways uh, where they belong. And we're making some mistakes of one line or two lines below or above. So the conclusions are that we have proposed a, a notation system adapted for MR. 
an accompanying set of metrics, and we have tested this approach on an off-the-shelf OMR system. Um, at the end of the day, what we believe is that um, maybe this format might not be the, the panacea, but it might spark some inspiration for further ideas down the line to finally harmonize the academic aspects of OMR into one single evaluation set of metrics and representation. So thank you so much for, for your time. Uh, sorry for going a little bit fast, but uh, now if you want, uh, you can find the repository here. So. Uh, thank you, Paul. Thank you very much for this presentation. Uh, it's time now for some quick question answering. Uh, if everybody, I mean, everybody's encouraged to ask questions to Pau now or put them off for the session panel. Um, yeah. Um, how do you handle voices and especially voices that can be permuted or just like you have a first, second voice, but you could also have them switched around? How do you handle polyphonic music? So the point is that since we handle every, so um, in summary, we ignore the concept of voices because the problem is that voices are a quite high level musicological concept. And for a construction of scores, uh, it's something that we will postpone to, uh, to a later stage. So we ignore voices. And what we do is at the ambiguation step in which we consider um, the time onset of each note and the position on the staff. If the first note of a group of notes is above an uh, before time-wise to another, we just sort by that, essentially. So this way, we, you can guarantee that pretty much every note group is independent from each other. Mm -hmm. But um, in the metrics, do you then also have, for example, a metric if a note is on the correct staff, for example? I saw you have pitch, uh, distance, yes, uh, and, and time. Yes, yes. Uh, we have also this, uh, the, the equivalent thing for staffs, if I remember correctly. But in any case, it's, it's, it's taken into account. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think there was another. Yeah. Um. You, you said the measure were self-contained, so it's like when you decompose the score, you have uh, a, a group for measures. How do you deal with the with the object that are uh, go across measures, like um, some annotation <laughs> belongs to multiple ones? So for this case, since we um, uh, what we have in. Uh, Basically, this is also inspired by MEI, but the point is that for most of the elements like slurs and others, you must always provide some kind of identifier to know where you come from and where you're going. So the way that we solve this is that uh, all um, identifiers are uh, defined at the document level. And for anything that starts at some point and breaks the tree structure, we have a starting note and an ending note. So for slurs, we have an, a starting note with a, a certain identifier, and for other, uh, for the further down uh, elements, we have the the ending identifier. In principle, right now we have not covered the case where oh, we want to make sure that the slur is moving from this identifier to this other identifier is the exact. This is something that we have not incorporated in the metrics as of yet, because we wanted to focus on the single measure case. But um, know that this is the way that we have defined it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, last question, Philippe. Yes. So thank you for the presentation, which is quite interesting. Uh, I, I can see that you produce metrics. Uh, is there at the end a list uh, of the differences found in uh, both scores uh, at the element level? Or... So, sorry, I'm not sure I understand the question. Uh, yeah. So so you, you, you provide global metrics on the differences between two scores. I can understand that. Uh, hmm. Is there a list of the differences that has, has been found, uh, which can, which is outputted by your system? Or... So the the way the system works is that we apply a tree uh, edit distance algorithm. So internally we have a matching of what nodes correspond to what nodes and the edits that are required to obtain one tree from the other. Uh -huh. But I I have currently not implemented a way to show this nicely, so to speak. Um, that's the only that might some future work, but uh, currently I'm a little bit out of cycles. So maybe uh, I will post it as a as an issue. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm seeing that Daniel has, uh, okay, a quick one, please. Uh, yeah. Okay, um, if you do compute this time metric, 
are these relative times from one node group to the next or absolute times? And then if there's one error, then all subsequent will be wrong as well. So the point is that um, um, the, in, within the notation, the way we at time is as an onset from the starting point of the measure. So of course, if you miss a note at some point, everything will shift forwards. But this is of course is intended because the point is that if you make a mistake, for instance, with the type of note, the impact that this has on the final uh, playback of the score is going to be, of course, that everything gets shifted forwards. So this is kind of intended. In, okay, in but you regard. could still have correct notation, even synchronized notation after a mistake if all the voice also wait, for example. And maybe in this case it would make more sense to have relative times even within the measure. Yes, but it also makes everything considerably harder to compute. And also, um, I believe that you can also... Um, so this is an, uh, some ideas that we have in, at some point is that since we have every single node of, of the stuff and we are know what elements are modifying every node, uh, we can potentially compute the duration of that node. So we can also compute metrics for, for individual node elements if you wanted, which is the kind of information that you want to retrieve. But if you want to know how much um, one mistake affects the global score, I think it makes more sense to have the, 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 the shift from the beginning of the measure. It also makes things a little bit more independent in, in the sense of measure level independence.